In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you guys how to add a subplot to an already existing figure inside matplotlib. Now normally, we use the following approach, plt.subplots. This is the most common way and also, also the easiest way of creating a figure and access object inside matplotlib. The problem with this approach is that both of them are created at the same time. Okay, now it's possible that somewhere later in our execution, we'll need to create another access object, if that's possible. And another thing that can happen is that maybe we created our figure using plt.figure. Okay, now how do we add our access object to it? Okay, maybe we didn't want to initialize the access object in the start. So then we wonder how do we add an access object to our figure after the figure has already been created? Okay, so that's what we'll discuss in today's video. And the way of doing this is actually really simple. There's just one function. We do figure dot add subplot, and then we pass in one, one, one. I'm sure you guys have seen this before, and this will return our access object. We can then plot anything on this access object as we normally would. So I'm gonna plot a simple line chart, okay? Just a bunch of random values. And if I run this, we see our output here normally, perfectly normally like we always do, okay? Now, don't think we're gonna stop the video right here. There's actually a lot more to discuss, okay? We're gonna take this a step further and discuss the add subplot function in detail, okay? Now, this over here, first of all, let's talk about this. What is this parameter? This here is actually three separate parameters. We can actually write it like this, and this is what I prefer because it's more readable. So if I run this, we'll get this output, the exact same thing. Now, what does this mean? Well, the first two parameters are like the dimensions, okay? The first parameter is the rows, the number of rows, and the second parameter is the number of columns, okay? And the third parameter here is the position, the position inside that grid. We're defining a one by one grid, and we're gonna put in one subplot, okay? There's only one slot in a, in a grid with just one row and one column. There's only one position, right? So we'll pass in one. Now, if we create a two by two grid, now we can put in more subplots. We can put in up to four, okay? So let me just duplicate these and let's just remove this. We'll just be creating empty, uh, empty access objects from now on, okay? So I'll put number two over here, number three, and number four. Let's see what happens. And now we get a very nice two by two grid with four subplots for access objects, okay? So that's the entire concept here. Now, one question might, that might come to mind is that which access object is which? Well, this here is the first one. Okay, the top left one. The second one is to its right. Okay, then we come down here again and the bottom left is the third one and the bottom right is the fourth one. So you can kind of see the trend here, right? It, they start from up here, okay, the top left, and then we go from the left to right in the same row, okay? Then we come back down to the next row, the start of the next row, and then we go from left to right. Okay, that's how the counting works. So if I make this a three by two grid, okay, then we can put in two more. All right, whoops. And this can be five and this can be six. And let's just go through the counting one more time. And let's just make this a bit bigger. We, we need more space. So this is one. This here is two, this here is three, this here is four, this here is five, and this here is six. So everything's been pretty simple so far, right? Now, there's one more thing I really want to emphasize on, and that's how we can further customize the layout of our access objects. Now, there's actually one more slight problem, in a sense, with this statement, the fig access is equal to plt.subplots function, this function can actually define multiple accesses, okay? It can also do the same thing, and it can do it in an even easier format. We can just do three and two, 
and it will return six access objects in here that are basically, you know, it's a three and two, three by two grid, and there are going to be six access objects in there, okay? So it's very customizable and very, you know, quick, very easy. Now, there's one problem though. This function is only capable of returning equally sized layouts, equally sized to access objects. Now, the problem here is that what if we want different sized access objects on the same graph, okay? Like, for example, let me show you something really cool. I'm going to remove all that. Then over here, I'll do fig.add subplot. And we don't really need to store the return access object, okay? Because we're not really doing any plotting right now. So I'm just going to do this, okay? Just observe, and I'll explain how I did this in a minute, okay? And add subplot over here, and let's do two, two, and three. Three subplots. But look at this. This is interesting now. What I just did was create only three subplots, okay? Even though this was a four by four grid, right? So how was this possible? And this is something that you cannot do with the subplots function, okay? This is only really possible with the add subplot function because we get a lot more control over the way we individually add plots, you know, access objects. One thing you need to understand is that the first parameter being two, the row parameter being two, doesn't mean that it's going to take up two rows. What it means is that we're dividing the available space into two rows. That's what it means. So even though I initially created two columns and two rows, and then I put this access object in here, what happens is that when I place the second one over here, our second subplot, I said that there's only one row in here. I did not partition it. If I do that, if I say two over here, can you guess what's going to happen? It's going to, you know, be completely normal. And then we can go ahead and put a fourth one in here. Okay. But if I say one, it's going to treat the second column as just one row. And thus we end up with a very big, you know, a very big subplot. Well, let's do one more example. I'll just clear this stuff up. Okay. And we'll make a three by two grid and put in three subplots. Okay. In the one, three, and five positions. And what this will do is give us a figure with one column that has three subplots. Okay. And the second column is completely free. It's completely empty. And this means that we can do whatever with it. We can put in just one subplot, put in two or put in three. That's up to us. Okay. So if I just close this now, let's try out different combinations. What I can do is say one row. And what one row will do is make up, make it take up the whole row. Okay. Just like I explained earlier. And the second column, okay, which position, which subplot position is the second column? Well, it's the second subplot, right? So if I do this, then we end up with the following code, okay? And the reason why this has the position two is because this is the second subplot. Now, it is taking up the space of three subplots, but that still makes it the second subplot, okay? Just because it takes up the position of the fourth and the sixth doesn't make it the fourth or the sixth, okay? It's still the second. And what we can also do is change this to two, Okay, and change this to four. And now we basically divided the second column into two rows. So now we have these two columns over here. Sorry, these two subplots over here. This is how you can customize your application, customize your subplots however you want. And this is why I said that this function is a lot more flexible than the subplots function. Okay. So it's pretty useful, it's pretty handy, and it's, uh, well, if you want to make a very complex layout, this is your go-to choice. So with this, our tutorial is over. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys learned something new today, and you found this video interesting, hopefully. If there's anything else you want to see in the future, make sure to tell me in the comment section below. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future content. Leave a like, leave a comment, 
Let me know what you thought and I'll see you guys in a later video. Bye then.